you to God be the glory. What a blessed day. Beautiful weather today, beautiful worship, a beautiful king we serve, a beautiful king who loves us, man. Thank you, Jesus, for allowing us to be in this place. Man, I know so many people that are they're just so bound, man. They're so bound. They're so tied down by the ways of the world. Um, they're so caught up in worldly traditions and ways of life and family traditions and old habits and bondages and, and addictions and, and all the stuff that the devil tries to weigh us down with and bring destruction in our lives until we die and end up in hell with him. Amen. And it's, it's sad because you try and share things with people and they just don't want to hear it. They just don't want to hear the truth, man. Um, and that's why it's vitally important for us as believers who know the truth and who have been rescued and set free and have had the veil lifted to stand in position and warfare and intercede for those individuals so that the Holy Spirit can break through. Amen? Because there was a time and period in our life where we didn't want to hear any of that stuff either. We had people telling us, you shouldn't be doing this, you shouldn't be doing that, you need to come out of this, you need to stop doing that, and we thought they were crazy. Amen? I know I thought they were crazy. I thought they were talking some foolishness and they had no idea what was really going on in this world and I had it all figured out. I found out I was, <laughs> I was wrong, man. <laughs> I was wrong. Spending time locked up, spending time in detoxes and all that stuff, but I was the one that had to figure it out. Amen? Hallelujah. So um, today's going to be kind of interesting. Um, I know we've all at some point in our life had somebody tell us that we need to get real. You need to get real. Or we told somebody, get real, man. Get real, you're full of it. Get real, what you're talking is nonsense. You need to get real. Amen? So that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about getting real. Amen? We have got to get real. Um, and one of the things that's involved in that is realizing um, the new garments that God has given us. Now, I don't know if everybody remembers, but I, I don't even think it was that long ago, maybe a week, week and a half ago, um, we had a Friday night service. And at the end of the service, um, Pastor had us all so we were standing there, and he had us all stand there, and he said, I want everybody to unzip your old garments and take a step forward out of them. God is releasing new garments tonight, is what he said. So we all stood there, and we unzipped, we stepped out, and we received the new garments. And I'm telling you, man, when that was released, it was like, I was instantly in this place of like, snap. The glory of God was just loaded in that room. It was phenomenal. And I know we talked about it in our Saturday morning meeting, man. But you know, something that amazing and powerful, um, we have to make sure that we don't let stuff like that fall by the wayside. Amen. We get given so much meat here. We're eating filet mignon on a weekly basis, multiple times a week. Um, we're spoiled beyond measure. So it's easy to let things slip through the cracks. And one of the things I know is vitally important is that we do not allow the enemy to defile our new garments. Amen. We have been given clean clothes. And we are given the opportunity to have clean clothes every single day. So I hope everyone used the washing machine. We don't have any funky clothes going on in here. I'm just messing around. Um, the Holy Spirit was really revealing to me, and I know he's been revealing it to us, and we've been hearing a lot about the times that we're in, the seasons we're in, um, all the stuff that's going on in the world, the chaos, um, and that we are God's called and chosen anointed ones to bring healing, to bring rescue, to bring freedom, to bring um, his word to those that are going to be in need, those that are in need, and those that are going to really be in need here shortly. Um, we know that there's a great revival coming. We know that the end times are near. We know that the, the early and latter rains are going to be poured out, and we know that we have to maintain position so that we are able to rescue those that are in need in that time. Amen? We are God's hand in this realm, and we have to deliver his spirit to other individuals. And the devil is doing everything he can to try and sway us and to get us to step off course and to go back to the old. Amen? We've got to be very, very vigilant at getting real with our identity, who we are, and with maintaining undefiled garments. Amen? So let's go to Isaiah 61, starting at verse 1. It 
The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. I just want to stop there for a minute. One thing that we have to remember and hold on to is that you cannot give what you do not have. Amen? If you are not, if you are not dressed, possessed, filled, and baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire, if you do not carry the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, if you are not full of joy so that you can give joy, you will not be able to be used in this time. Amen? We have got to maintain who we are in him. That means no matter what you go through, you have to press through it and maintain peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit through it. That is our call. That is our purpose. That is our destiny. In order for us to fulfill Isaiah 61 that has been prophesied to us, we have got to maintain a life walking in these gifts. Amen? You cannot give what you do not have to give. You can try and fake it, but it's going to be used for nothing. Amen? Hallelujah. So let's go to verse something. Where do we leave off? Okay. So finishing up verse 3, it says, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. And they shall rebuild the old ruins, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall, shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the foreigners shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But you shall be named the priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. You shall eat the riches of Gentiles, and in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offerings. I will direct their work in truth, and I will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the posterity whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For as the earth brings forth its bud, as the garden causes the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. Amen. And I know that this is where we're at right now. We all need to take heed to the word of the Lord that we have got to maintain purified and undefiled garments in this time. Amen. I mean, we always need to be doing that, but even now it's more vital. Um, we know that the devil is running rampant right now. There are more attacks going on than ever before against God's people. God, I mean, the enemy is using God's people against God's people. There is all-out warfare all the way around. People are arguing, fighting. Um, there's problems all the way around. Amen. We have got to make sure to maintain walking in purity and in cleansed hands, pure heart, clean hands, and undefiled garments. Daily fulfilling our priesthood is the key that unlocks the mysteries of God in our life and keeps us in a place of always knowing who we are, not allowing the voice of the stranger to dictate our identity. When we let up even a little, the enemy creeps in and tries to drive us crazy. Purity and cleanliness are a matter of life and death in these times. Amen? So I know it talks a lot about, you know, God causing us to walk in righteousness. Um, but one thing God will not do is force you. He causes those who are truly after him. So I don't want anybody to misinterpret, you know, that that's saying that, oh, well, I can do whatever I want. God's going to, he's going to cause me to do good anyway. That's not the case. What he's talking about is for those that are truly after him with a true heart's desire to please him, to be pleasing to him, and actually to be used for his kingdom, for his glory, he will cause you to walk in righteousness. He knows we're not perfect. He knows we'll make mistakes. He knows we're going to fall down. But because your heart has stayed on him and after him, 
you're going to repent. You're going to turn quickly. You're going to get back on course. You're going to get your garments cleansed. You're going to step out of the old and into the new. Amen? And that's how he's going to cause you to walk in righteousness and justice and be a part of the end time revival. Amen? Second Kings chapter 2, starting at verse 1. came to pass when the Lord was about to take up Elijah into heaven by a whirlwind that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. Then Elijah said to Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Bethel. But Elisha said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Bethel came out to Elijah and said to him, do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today. And he said, yes, yes, I know. Shut up. Leave me alone. Get behind me, voice of the stranger. There's always going to be attacks when you're walking in the will of the Lord. Amen. There's going to be some voice of the stranger trying to deter you. Elisha wasn't having it. So then Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to Jericho. But he said, as the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. Now the sons of the prophets who were at Jericho came to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that the Lord will take away your master from over you today? So he answered, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Then Elijah said to him, Stay here, please, for the Lord has sent me on to, to the Jordan. But he said, As the Lord lives and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. And 50 men of the sons of the prophets went and stood facing them at a distance while the two of them stood by the Jordan. Now Elijah took his mantle, rolled it up, and struck the water. And it was divided this way and that way so that the two of them crossed over on dry, on dry ground. And so it was when they had crossed over that Elijah said to Elisha, Ask what may I do for you, for I am taken away from you. Elisha said, please, let a double portion of your spirit be upon me. So I just want to stop there for a minute. This is confirmation that it is vitally important for us to maintain the course that God has set for us. Had Elisha been deterred, when Elijah crossed over, he wouldn't have been there to be asked, what do you want from me when I go away? He would have missed the blessing. He would have missed the anointing. He would have missed everything that God had for him to do. Amen. It is vital that we maintain the course. We don't let the voice of the stranger dictate what we do, our decision making. We have got to stay dressed and possessed with the Holy Ghost, stay filled with him, stay in worship, stay in his presence, stay in prayer so that we can take captive every attack, every thought of the enemy so that we do not miss what God has predestined and ordained for us to do. Just because it's been predestined doesn't mean it's going to happen. We have got to maintain a clean walk, undefiled garments, and getting real with our identity in order to make it to the predestined location that God has for us to do what we are called to do. Amen? You can maybe go the long way sometimes, and he'll make things work to the good and get you there, but there comes a time and point where you will miss it. Amen? So it's better to just go the straight, straight through path than go the long way. Hallelujah. So he said, you have asked a hard thing, nevertheless, if you see me when I, am, when I am taken from you, it shall be so for you. But if not, it shall not be so. Then it happened as they continued on and talked that suddenly a chariot of fire appeared with horses of fire and separated the two of them. And Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. And Elisha saw it. And he cried out, My father, my father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. So he saw him no more, and he took hold of his clothes and he tore them off into two pieces. And this is a representation of tearing off the old garments and stepping into the new. You cannot bring your old garments into a new anointing, into a new call that God has for you. Amen. Elisha was divinely positioned. He did not allow the voice of the stranger or the enemy or anybody disguised as anything to distract him from the route that he knew God had him on. He stuck with it. He saw it through. He was there to cross over into the new with Elijah, he was there to be asked the question, what do you want from me? He wanted a double portion of the anointing, and when that double portion was coming, he tore off the old, stepped out of it, and was there to receive the new. Amen? 
And it says, now then, he also took up the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and went back and stood by the bank of the Jordan. Then he took the mantle of Elijah that had fallen from him and struck the water and said, where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he also had struck the water, it was divided this way and that, and Elijah crossed over. Vitally important to understand that the crossed over is crossing over into the new. He crossed over into the new the first time with Elijah to be able to be positioned to receive the anointing, and he crossed back over to step into his new call, purpose, and destiny. Amen? Without cooperation with the Spirit of God, we miss the mantle and the double portion. God will tear away everything that comes in between him being your fulfillment. If anything is fulfilling you other than him and you're truly after him, he will tear it away from you. And only those that truly have a love affair relationship will surrender and let go. Old garments for new. Maintaining your new garments will bring the release of the mantle and a double portion of the anointing. You know, and this is phenomenal too because when Elijah first came to Elisha, what did he have to do? He had to step away from all the riches he had. He had to step away from his family. He had to step away from everything. So he had to step out of his old life then just to take the call to follow Elijah. And he not only did that, he asked to go back and say goodbye to his parents. And Elijah was like, are you serious, guy? Like, I just offered you this. You're going to, you know, say I need to go back? Elijah immediately realized what he had done, repented. He took everything, destroyed it, and offered a sacrifice to the Lord and said, I'm done with my old life. I'm going with you. And so every step of the way, Elisha was like, I'm going with God, period. I'm not going to miss the anointing. I'm not going to miss the blessing. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And that's the call on us right now in this time. To fulfill Isaiah 61, this is the heart we have to have. It's God, 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 and that's it. It's his will, his will, his will, and that's it. You do that, everything else will work itself out. Ecclesiastes 9, 8. Now this is just a, just a simple scripture that just kind of lays a baseline for some stuff too. It says in Ecclesiastes 9, 8, it says, Let your garments always be white and let your head lack no oil. You know, and we know that the ultimate way, the only way, the best way to cause our garments to stay white and to let our head never lack of oil is worship. Amen? Worship, assembled worship, is the key to maintaining clean, clean garments. What a blessing we have. I've talked to a lot of people, man, that they don't know anything about worship. They don't know anything about worship at all. My, my wife and I, we were, we were out of town, and we visited a church just to um, try and get refreshed while we were gone, you know, just to maintain a presence, maintain an anointing. We'd heard about a church, and somebody told us about it, and so we went. And, you know, it starts off, and they, they start their worship, and it's like, oh, praise God, this is awesome. You know, there's a song, and then there's another song, and then that's it. It's like, snap's going on here, man. We just, like, started to make the exchange here, you know, like, what's going on? And then it's like, sit down and listen to somebody talk. I'm like, man, these people just don't know what they're missing, man. I mean, we, you know, and that's why it's so vital for us to get trained up, get dressed up, especially the people in the program, you know. That is part of your call is to go out there and not only lead the lost, like the people that are out there using drugs and stuff like that, but to lead the ones who are saved because there's a lot of deceived, saved individuals out there. They don't know all the truth, amen. They need people like us who know Worship is vital. Assembling and worship is vital. People are having problems in their home. They're having problems in their life with their kids and all this stuff because there's so many open doors because they lack the presence of God. So we have got to make sure that we're maintaining our walk so that we can help assist not only those that are sick, suffering, dying, addicted, but those that are in the churches that are lacking so that they can be set up to help more people. Amen? Amen. The body of Christ has to help the body of Christ so the body of Christ can do its job. Psalms 149, verse 1. It says, praise the Lord, hallelujah. 
Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Let Israel rejoice in their maker. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbrel and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in their glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand to execute vengeance on the nations and the punishments on the prophets, to bind, the kings, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. But I'm going to tell you right now, if you're not doing the first six verses of this, which are praise, worship, and fighting for his presence, you are not going to have the sword in your hand to execute judgment. Amen? You are not going to have the sword in your hand to execute judgment, to bring the vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples, to bind kings with chains and the nobles with fetters of iron. Without his presence, we are nothing. Amen? Praise and worship are vital. Without worship, we are nothing. Worship is the key to exchanging the old for new. It is the meeting place to get real. When you're in his presence, you know who you are. Amen. When you have that touch from the throne room of God, when he whispers into your ear, when he whispers into your spirit, when he tells you, I love you, you're my son, I'm pleased with you, you're doing an amazing job, I know you have struggles, but you're with me. Your heart is with me. You are stayed on me. That will melt you, and it will cause you to know who you are in him, your true identity in him. Amen. And without that meeting place in his presence through worship and assembly, Worship on your own time. Worship in your actions and the way you do your chores and the way you clean your house and the way you carry yourself when you're outside. Without that worship that is a heart-to-heart connection with him, you will lose sight of who you truly are. The devil will creep in slowly and he will begin to draw you back to your old identity. But thank God it's never too late. Amen? There's always a way of escape. While we're here, we're breathing, we're on this earth, God's hand is always out saying, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I'm here for you. Repent. Turn it around. You can start over. There's a fresh start for you. Don't give up. Amen? So don't let the enemy beat you up, man. Don't let him beat you up. You make mistakes. You tell the enemy to shut up. Go back where he belongs in the pit of hell. God can work everything to the good. Father, I repent. I'm sorry. Make me new. I'm stepping out of my old garments, and I'm getting real with the new ones today. Today is a new day. Everything behind me is old. It's gone. I'm clean now. Use me, Lord. Mold me, grow me, change me. Don't let the enemy tell you it's too late. Amen. Psalms 143, starting at verse 7. Hallelujah, answer me speedily, O Lord, my spirit fails. Do not hide your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in which I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Deliver me, O Lord, from my enemies. In you I take shelter. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God, your spirit is good. Lead me in the land of uprightness. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring my soul out of trouble. In your mercy, cut off my enemies and destroy all those who afflict my soul. For I am your servant. We must get real with our Father. Cry out to him, long for him, chase after him. He is always there with his hand of restoration. Only when you get real with God can you get real with yourself and with everyone else. No more masks, no more hiding. You know, there's a a saying I like to say. I've heard it all my life. Everybody's probably heard it. In the kingdom of God, you cannot fake it until you make it. It's impossible. You cannot fake it until you make it because you will not make it when you fake it in the kingdom of God. Everything gets exposed. You may have a run for a little while. God will expose everything everything. You cannot run from him. You cannot play games with him. He will not be mocked. Amen. 
it is best for you to come clean. Repent, get real with him so that you can get real with yourself and get real with other individuals. Because you cannot give what you do not have. Amen. And I mean, this is, this is reality, you know, and I'm, I'm not just talking to everybody, I'm talking to me. I got to look in the mirror and say, dude, you need to get real. You need to tighten up. You need to straighten up. You need to take care of this. You need to take care of that. There's no time for games. Amen. This is for all of us. This is a time and season where we have got to get real with who we are and with who he is in us. We cannot lose sight of it. And that starts with dealing with us. We weren't put here to expose six other people. That's not why God brought us to this ministry, for you to be the exposer of all. You're the exposer of self. You're to expose yourself, expose your demons, expose your problems, expose what God is trying to get rid of in you. Amen? Because there's going to be a time way down the road when you're probably going to be used to expose other people and to help them deal with what God is exposing in them. But if you don't expose you, you can't be used to expose anybody. So time to shut up and look in the mirror. Amen? There's a lot of vital things when it comes to maintaining clean garments. Praise God, we serve a God who's the God of possible and can do everything and can cause us to do everything as long as we submit and surrender to him and seek him with everything we have. He aligns us in all this stuff. Amen? You don't have to go crazy and drive yourself, oh, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this. No, you need to serve the Lord, you need to love the Lord, you need to bless him, you need to praise him, and you need to let him lead you. That's it. You praise him, you seek him, and he'll direct your steps. And he'll bring all this stuff to you in the time it needs to be brought, so don't allow the enemy to try and get you in a big anxiety ball and you got to fulfill and do all these things. You fulfill what God has put before you, and that's it. And he will direct your steps. That's to seek him first, and he'll give you everything you need. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. But one of the things I have a big struggle with is I'm very, 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 very hard on myself. Um, because I expect more. You know, I expect more from myself. I expect better from myself. Um, and I can get into that place where I, I'm like, dummy you do that for you know better um and you know that's a that's a it's somewhat of a good place to be but it's also a bad place to be you know there's got to be a balance you know we're harder on ourselves because we love the lord with everything we have you know our heart's desire is to please him our heart's desire is to do the right thing so we're hard on ourselves when we do the wrong thing or we make the wrong choice or we didn't listen or see things all the way through so then it's kind of a place where it's like man lord i'm sorry i can't believe i did that goodness, man, please forgive me, you know, work it to the good, I'm sorry. Um, but we got to be careful that it doesn't get to a place of condemnation because the enemy is trying to bring it to a place of condemnation to where you waller in your sorrow and then it becomes a shameful sorrow rather than a repentive sorrow, amen? And there's a major, major, major difference, amen? So in this um, when you are getting real with yourself, when you're getting real with under, other individuals, there's a balance. And that happy medium is a place right in the lane of humility. Amen? When you are maintaining a life of humility, you are able to see through the trap of deception and the sorrow that the enemy tries to bring, as opposed to the sorrow that the Lord is bringing in your life. And this is vital to maintaining clean garments because even though you might have a heart's desire to do the right thing, if you get into that place of condemnation, that's defiling your garments. You may think you're doing the right thing, but it, condemnation is a sin. Self-condemnation is a sin. It's a spirit. So 1 Peter 5, verse 5. It says, likewise, you younger people, submit yourselves to your elders. Yes, all of you be submissive to one another and be clothed with humility. There's another garment. For God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, 
knowing that the same sufferings are experienced in your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all peace, or may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So we know there's a balance that we have to achieve when we are getting real, when we are maintaining clean garments, um, and we've got to maintain a walk of humility. Amen. When you're humble, you can receive counsel, correction, and direction, which causes you to be able to expose and get rid of the things that you're dealing with. When you're prideful, you don't think there's anything wrong with you, and if somebody does say something to you, you're so stinking prideful, you'll never deal with anything. You'll keep that mask on. You'll keep going the same way. You might fake it for a little while, but you're going to fall on your face eventually. And that's what we're all trying to do to get through to everybody, to understand you came here to get yourself straightened out with the Lord. So let him straighten you out. And let the people that he put in your life to help you see the straightening out do their job to help you. Because I know when I first came in, I was a stinking mess. I was an idiot. I was rebellious. I hated authority. I wanted to fight everybody. I was bound up. I was stuck in the world. I was stuck in prison and jail mentality with snitching and all that stuff. And I, I, was, I was gone. Um, thank God I was sentenced here because I probably would have booked it way before I was supposed to. And because I was sentenced and looking at a mandatory four-year, five-year sentence in prison, I said, it's a good day to die. So, you know, but it was a blessing for me. You know what I'm saying? It was a blessing for me. But then there came a time where it was like, it didn't matter if I was sentenced. I was here. It was like, there's a line in the sand. I ain't going back. God is for real. God touched, changed, and healed my life. And he let me know the true reality. Amen. But it took me being a knucklehead at the start, but actually starting to let these things permeate in my spirit, soul, and body, and listening to people that I knew knew better than me. You know, the Lord gave me a real clear vision of myself and said, just look in the mirror for a minute. I want to show you something. Look at this decision. Look where you ended up. Look at that decision. Look where you ended up. Look at this. Look at that. Look at all these people you hurt, you destroyed, um, and did all kinds of other damage to. Look at all this stuff. That was your way of thinking. I'm going to cut all that stuff off and wipe it clean. But I want you to listen to these people that I put in your life because they know what's best for you. Because they are listening to my spirit. And they will choose the times and the places and the seasons for you to do certain things. Obey and shut up. And I said, okay. <laughs> so you, you, you made that pretty clear. And you know, I'm not saying I was, I was not perfect by a long shot. I made my mistakes. I bumped my head. But my heart was on him. My heart was on doing the right thing. My heart was on serving. My heart was stayed on him at all times. And he blessed me through that. And my heart was stayed on submitting to authority and obeying my authority. No matter if it seemed stupid. No matter if I didn't agree. If I didn't agree or thought it was stupid, it was my carnal mind old man nonsense trying to take over. Amen. And that's the reality we have to come to. If you don't agree with something here, it's because your old man is telling you not to agree with it. And your old man is tied to the devil. So watch out for those voices that are saying this doesn't look right or that doesn't line up or whatever. You don't know nothing. We're here to learn. We're here to get taught. We're here to get trained up. We're here to get dressed and possessed with the king. And we're learning from people who have been through that walk for a long time who know how to direct us down that path. So submit and surrender. Amen. Hallelujah. Isaiah 52, starting at verse 1. It says, Awake, awake. Put on your strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments. O Jerusalem, the holy city. For the uncircumcised and the unclean shall no longer come to you. Shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose yourself from the bonds of your neck, O captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord, you have sold yourselves for nothing, and you shall be redeemed without money. Hallelujah. For thus says the Lord God, my people went down at first 
first into Egypt to dwell there. Then the Assyrian oppressed them without cause. Now therefore, what have I here, says the Lord, that my people are taken away for nothing? Those who rule over them make them wail, says the Lord, and my name is blasphemed continually every day. Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he who speaks. Behold, it is I. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims peace, who brings glad tidings of the good things, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Your watchmen shall lift up their voices. With their voices they shall sing together, for they shall see eye to eye when the Lord brings back Zion. Break forth into joy, sing together, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has made bare his holy arm. In the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Depart, depart. This is speaking to us. Depart, depart. Go out from there. Touch no unclean thing. Go out from the midst of her. Be clean. You who bear the vessels of the Lord or bear the garments of the Lord, for you shall not go out with haste nor go by flight, for the Lord God will go before you and the God of Israel will be your rear guard. Hallelujah. We were bought at a high price. Do not take it for granted. Amen. So we know there are many ways that we can defile our garments um, when we lose sight of who we are, when we lose sight of staying real, staying, making things real, making our identity real, living in a place where we are maintaining clean garments. There are many, many things that can corrupt our garments that can stray us away from, from who we are and our identity. Colossians 3.5. says, therefore, put to death your members, which are on the earth fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, since you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcised nor uncircumcised barbarian Scythian slave nor free but Christ is all and in all when we lose sight of who we truly are we begin to contaminate our garments the enemy is constantly trying to get us to exchange the new for the old we must get real who we are daily, every single day, day in and day out, we have got to maintain making our identity real. We have got to make it fresh. We have got to make it joyful. It is our responsibility to maintain it. Amen. God has given us ordained stuff from the throne room to help us in that. We have each other. We have prayer booklet. We have the word of God. We have worship. We have direct relationship with him where you can just go to him and talk to him like he's a normal person it's not some religious act where it's like oh lord god almighty please hear my cry today lord you can speak to him just like i'm speaking to you right now he's there for us just like that but we have to make that real amen we have to make that a reality and in order to do that you have to get real with yourself and know that you need a god in heaven to rescue you, to help you, to lead you, to guide you. And you need counsel, correction, and direction. Amen? So we know that a lot of times we just need to keep our mouths shut. Put a muzzle over that thing before you sew yourself into a dirty garment. Amen? And then you got to reap. And that's, that's, that's the thing too. You know, just because you step out of the old garments and into the new doesn't mean you're not going to reap for the things you did in those old garments. Amen? So that's why it's vitally important to maintain clean garments, to maintain that clean cleanliness, to maintain the purity, to maintain staying away from those things you know are going to defile you. You see something on Facebook or you see something while you're out shopping or you see something anywhere, you hear something, get away from that stuff. Cut that thing off. Take, take it captive, sever it, destroy it immediately. Don't gawk at it. Don't stare at it. 
Don't look at it again because that's going to defile your garment. We have got to protect our eyes. We have to protect our ears, which is going to protect our heart, which is going to maintain clean garments. Amen? The more you touch that is unclean, the more defiled your garments get, the more access the enemy has to you. And there may be a time where you strayed away too far, you fall on your face, and you might not make it back. Amen? So take it serious. Think about those things. There's a lot of things to think about when it comes to what can defile your garments. You know what's right. You know what's wrong. You know what you should look at. You know what you shouldn't look at. You know what you need to shut up, but your flesh just doesn't want you to. So you say it anyway, and then you have to repent and reap. And then somebody else is hurt by it probably. So now they're going through stuff. So then you have to repent and get the blood off your hands because you may cause them to fall. There's, there's a ripple effect to everything we do. It can be good. It can be bad. Amen. Galatians 5, starting at verse 16. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Man, we should have just started with that first scripture, then we could all just left. <laughs> I mean, that sums it all up in a nutshell. I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. The old garments lust against the new, and the new go against the old. Amen? And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rubberies, and the like. And I'm going to add a few more, backbiting, gossiping, slandering, um, anger towards other individuals, grumbling, complaining, laziness, compromise, complacency. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. If you are not getting real with these things and getting them to shut up, muzzle them, get rid of them, the enemy is creeping in and defiling your garments. Familiar spirits are lurking and they are always downplaying your sin. There's a familiar spirit that will come in and say, that wasn't really that bad. That wasn't really that bad. You're okay. It's all right. It's not that big a deal. You got to know that that's a lie. God takes sin serious. He takes what comes out of your mouth seriously. And like we talked about before, we're not here to beat ourselves up, but we need to take it serious. Amen. If a voice comes to you and say, ah, don't worry about it, it's not that big a deal, you're okay. You know that's the devil. Find those familiar spirits, tell them to get behind you, repent, and get on your face before the Lord. Amen? And this is another reason why it's so vitally important for us to maintain the call to intercession and warfare. There's so many people out there that don't know any better. And there's so many people out there that do know better, and they're still making the choices they're making. And they need a divine intervention from the throne room of God to where their ears can be open, their eyes can be open, and their heart can be open to receive. And that comes through prayer and intercession of the saints. There was a time and season that prayer and intercession from the saints made a way of escape for us. Amen? It's because somebody was praying that one day our eyes would be opened. One day our ears would be open. One day our heart would be able to receive the love of Christ and who we truly are. Without that, people out there that are lost, they will never have that divine opportunity for the Holy Spirit to whisper into their spirit and say, you're mine, I've called you. I have something new for you. So we have got to be steadfast and immovable in our prayer life and in intercession. Don't take lightly the, the task, the honor of the task that we've been given to stay behind closed doors and fight for the kingdom and fight for those that are out there and lost. You don't have to be out there in the open laying hands on everybody all the time and seeking glory for yourself to do all this stuff out in the open where everybody sees you. You pray like that in private and your God will honor you in public. 
That's the word of God. Amen? I'm not saying there's not a time for people to go out there and lay hands on people and pray for people out in public and all. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying be appreciative and take heed to the honor and the blessing it is to be a behind, behind-the-scenes warrior. Amen? The Navy SEALs are behind-the-scenes warriors. They go in, they sneak in, nobody knows about it, nobody sees it, nobody hears about it. They sneak in, they destroy, and they rescue. Amen? We are the Navy SEALs of the kingdom. We go in, we destroy, and we rescue. People in China are getting rescued from stuff we're doing here in Okoe. Amen? People all over the world are getting rescued. They're getting delivered. They're getting exposed from what we're doing here in Okoe. Amen? Believe it and receive it, because it's real. James 5, verse 1. It says, Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted, and your garments are moth-eaten. I don't want moth-eaten garments. Your gold and silver are corroded, and their corrosion will be a witness against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have heaped up treasure in the last days. Indeed, the wages of the, of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. You have lived on the earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. Therefore, be patient, brethren, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the, of the earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord. Establish your garments for the coming of the Lord. Is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brethren, lest you be condemned. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. Hallelujah, hallelujah, and hallelujah. So we've got to maintain clean garments day in and day out. If you make a mistake, face it, repent for it, turn, don't go back. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to beat you up, but don't go lightly on yourself either. Live in that balance of maintaining a walk of humility, being sorrowful for the Lord and the things that you do that offend him, working your butt off to maintain clean garments and not do things that offend him. It takes hard work, dedication, and cooperation. It's not going to come easy, but the payout is spectacular. And I'm not talking about cash. I'm talking about your soul prospering and the souls of others prospering. Amen? Hallelujah. Father, we love you and bless you, Lord. We thank you for your word that was released, Father. We plead the blood of Jesus over it. We ask that every area where counsel, correction, and direction were needed, Lord, that it would meet every person. Father, we just thank you so much for all you're doing in each and every one of us, Lord. We ask, Father, that you would continue to mold us, to grow us, to expose us, and to cause us to be submissive to the exposure and to the prodding, to the pruning, and to the shearing, Lord, knowing that you are beautifying us and making us fresh and new for you and for those that are in need. So we commit our lives into your hands. We seal everybody in this room with your blood. We ask for more fire, more power, more wind, more rain of, of your glory to fill us, dress us, and possess us, Lord. And we just ask for more of you and less of us. In Jesus' name, amen.